Hail lords, ladies, and anything in between, and welcome back to the Silverleaf channel. Today I want to talk about lore and the limitations of game design. You may be wondering what I mean. Well, I'm sure most of you who have played any Elder Scrolls game, such as Skyrim or Oblivion, would assume that the locations and land that you explore are accurate to the book. But this isn't quite as true as you may think. This is where a lot of misconceptions pop up. The main misconception that many Elder Scrolls fans are led to believe is that whatever they see in-game is on point accurate to the lore, when in reality the locations we see in-game are mere portrayals of the places described in lore. Bethesda Game Studios' portrayal of the Mundus and beyond is obviously the better known portrayal. Don't get me wrong, I love and adore Bethesda and their awe-inspiring experiences in games. There are seemingly a lot of what I term as inaccuracies in their portrayal of the provinces of Tamriel. Take Balmora, for instance. Balmora in The Elder Scrolls III, Morrowind, filled me with wonder the first time I laid eyes on it, and I still think about Balmora often, as it left a good impression on me. Years later, I discovered that lore-wise, Balmora is way bigger than what was shown to us in The Elder Scrolls III. Let's take a look at the most reliable source on the internet for The Elder Scrolls lore, my trusty friend, the Imperial Library. The Imperial Library describes Morrowind as follows. Balmora is the district seat of House Hilalu and the largest settlement on Vardenvale. After Fivek City, Balmora's four districts are Hightown, the Commercial District, Labortown, and Fort Moonmoth. Hightown, on the hill to the west, has the Tribunal Temple, Halalo Council Hall, Rich Manors, Better Shops, and the Moragtong Guild Hall. The Commercial District, just west of the river, is centred on the large plaza north of South Gate, with the Strider Port along the south wall, east of South Gate. The Fighters Guild and Majors Guild, and most of Balmora's shops and inns, are located along the streets of the commercial district. Labor Town, east of the river, where the commoners and poor live, has several modest corner clubs and a few merchants. Fort Moonmoth, a long walk southeast of town, houses the Legion Garrison and the Imperial Cult. Why wouldn't Bethesda accurately design Balmora, you may ask? One word. Limitation. Elder Scrolls III Morrowind came out in 2002, so from a game design perspective, it would make sense not to make cities like Balmora a large expanse, as most systems back then wouldn't be able to perform to an acceptable standard with such a big expanse of land. Not to mention the little resources Bethesda had at the time. More than 10 years later, however, after the original release of Morrowind, Cinemax Online Studios, which to know is a part of a family company with Bethesda, released The Elder Scrolls Online's first expansion, Morrowind. With the company having a lot of resources at their disposal, Cinemax pulled off a brilliant interpretation of Morrowind and did not disappoint. Cinemax's portrayal of Morrowind is very accurate to how Morrowind is described in lore. It feels much more alive and full of mystery for whoever decides to explore. One other inaccuracy that still bothers me a lot if I think about it is how the diversity of Cyrodiilic cultures were not portrayed well enough in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. The Nibbanese and Colovian, for instance, are very different to each other. As Reddit user Texas Bacata states, The lore tells us that the original differences between the regions started when the Niban learned a self-reliance that separated them culturally and economically from Skyrim. This implies that the Colovian have close historic ties to Skyrim. It is said that the Colovian still worship Shaw, 
Shizar is especially venerated in the Colovian West, though he is called Shaw there, as the West Keens are resolutely and religiously Nordic. The Western Colovian is seen to be more war focused and to be the best seaman as well. They are fiercely independent and ultimately wasn't as culturally affected by the Elysian order and thus the counties are more autonomous. The Eastern Neban is a lot more merchant and magic based and is reported to have a mercantile megacracy and is a lot more cosmopolitan. They have a more high culture of garish costumes, bizarre tapestries, tattoos, brandings, and elaborate ceremony. Closer to the wellspring of civilization, they are more given to philosophy and the evolution of ancient traditions. The Colovians are more simple in their customs. The Colovians today still possess much of the frontier spirit of their ancestors. They are uncomplicated, self-sufficient, hearty, and extremely loyal to one another. Basically, the Colovians have more in common with the Nords of Skyrim than with the Nebanese, who are very alien culture. It is worth noting that many of my sources are from the Second Era. By the end of the Third Era, the two cultures may have been more intertwined as a few hundred years have passed. I never understood why Bruma is counted as a Nebanese city in oblivion. Doesn't make any sense to me, but it is basically Colovian in culture. Now with these cultures concepts fresh in your mind, imagine how much of an impact applying this to oblivion would have. I would guess Bethesda had plans to develop these concepts, but for one reason or another decided to change their course of plan. To conclude, Bethesda Game Studios, after Skyrim, is now one of the most popular game companies worldwide. So with the overwhelming success Skyrim had, and still has today even after so long, I am very excited and curious to see what they can pull off in the future with the Elder Scrolls. My biggest wish lore-wise for the Elder Scrolls 6 is to make the experience as accurate to the lore as possible by showing us the diverse cultures of whatever province or provinces we will experience next, and to blow our minds with the detail and expanse of locations wherever the Elder Scrolls 6 may take us. Thank you all for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and comment your thoughts down below. Until next time, bye for now my kin.